what's new in Snowflake since the last uh, <coughs> uh, pro talk we had. Uh, I introduced a new feature here. As you could see, there's a in, in rotated black spade. So that's my favorite. Uh, if Rich wants to add his favorite, he's going to have to figure out his bullet points. <laughs> so, <laughs> so hybrid oh, tables, if we all agree. Points. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because if you start adding a little image next to it, then you know, it's uh, out of alignment. Anyways, so hybrid tables uh, in preview, very huge. I think the biggest feature of this release, uh, of this summary of releases, and, and I would say even within this year, one top three. So. Since the uh, summit, sorry. So, so hybrid tables, uh, we'll talk about them in detail. Good for your transactional workloads, very good. For analyticals, it's a mixed reaction. Uh, we also have uh, in preview universal search and snow site. Uh, we'll look into that in the form of a co pilot. Uh, so, so, so we'll see how that works. So, that's, that's LLM involved. Uh, also, we have data quality monitoring. This is also one of my list of uh, to really to get into it because I in, in the previous projects I, I I had to do something like that and I would always have to build a custom framework maybe or or you know, copy from something else somebody else and and it's not never perfect. Doesn't mean this is perfect, but but it's there built in and uh, maybe we'll do a pro talk on it. But it helps with data quality monitoring. Another <laughs> access to Git repositories from Snowflake. <laughs> anyway, so, so Git repositories uh, is always good to have integrated into your uh, working environment. So that's always a positive in my book. Uh, Snowflake Copilot. So this is the. I would put a score on that one too, by the way, Jonas. So I would so, put the heart. So, yeah. I would put the heart bullet on that one too. So. Yeah, me too. Because <laughs> okay, uh, Snow, Snowflake Copilot. I would put that right now too because I just uh, just before this call, I, I tried a couple things and I was like, wow, this this definitely is in tune with, with your schema, your Snowflake setup. So so we'll, we'll quickly look at it, even that's though cool. it's not on the topic. Uh, budgets. That's also was announced in a, in a summit last year. Just now became general availability. Good stuff for accounting people. Not, I don't care that much in my, in my case. Uh, other, other things, uh, data collaboration updates. I'm not going to go through all of them. These are more minor, definitely. Uh, data loading, that's a good one. <laughs> Larger maximum file size. Uh, so now we can, uh, you know, if you don't want to split files or stubborn to split, now you can have a little bit more room to, to wiggle here. Yeah. Uh, performance improvements in JSON loading, that's good always, 25% faster, although, you know, that's always trust but yeah, verify. Yeah, always been an issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, let's look at developer extensions, right? That's, uh, there, there, there are exciting things like Python UDTF vectorized process method. So this, in general, allows Python to be much more faster in processing data which is always good. Uh, other things are you know, more iterations along the lines of uh, support for Streamlit, uh, additional features there added, like a chat support now, um, mm. data editor, things like that. So, so that's, that's evolution there going on. Um, SQL updates, nothing that major other than, uh, well, major. Uh, actually, two topics are as of. in our discussion today. Yeah, as of <laughs> and Cortex. <laughs> so it is major. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, but we do have uh, geo functions in, in place. Uh, new new geo functions. They're expanding that quite a lot. Also, H3 functions related to geography objects. I don't have not used them. I would need a definitely a starter. But they are expanding geo support quite a lot. That's going to be interesting to see some of this mapping and visuals how this translate. Uh, they did have some bugs fixed uh, in, in SQL. Uh, one of them, I think, was a uh, fixed issue with parse IP. Not that many people use, but there was an issue. And, and split part actually had issue ignoring trailing spaces. So, so it's just a little tiny thing. 
Uh, data governance, there are, again, incremental updates. Uh, well, Rich wanted to talk, uh, uh, didn't, we didn't get a chance of, about aggregation projection policies, maybe next time. Um, memoizable functions, this sounds great to me. <laughs> Uh, just, just, just vocally, but it's also a, a, a neat, cool feature because it allows you to. It, it's kind of like a caching mechanism, so mm. so it's very neat uh, and, and caches the whole function uh, and results differently and makes it very fast access to it. Uh, we do have web interface updates. Um, there is a big one. No, I, I don't know how big it is. Maybe it's more troublesome. No limit on rows return and worksheet results. I never yeah, had. A I have mixed feelings about that. But yeah, does it do yeah. pagination? Is that how it's doing it? Because I mean, obviously, you can't load it all. Uh, well, you can load it as much as your browser memory allows it. So there is a right. limit. <laughs> so, so that's why it's a mixed bag because you know it, you might crash your browser sooner okay. than you realize. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> especially if you have twenty fifty tabs open like me and Richard usually so um, this is an interesting update though because I do have yeah. this sort of premonition that at some point they're going to take over the BI side yes I, I think I, I I believe that too I think so seeing the kind of adding and we'll talk about well not talk but there was one <laughs> I added related to that BI uh they had the data rooms uh released oh right there on a data collaboration clean rooms? snowflake data clean rooms yeah so that's that okay. was an interesting yeah, okay. so feature it's, that's it's like a sharing data but you yeah but you can safely edit and and manipulate that kind of in a, in a clean room in a way right and, and uh, uh let's see and then we have data science updates Again, Snowflake Cortex classification goes throughout, or Cortex integration goes throughout. In this case, it's classification uh, uh, functionality, uh, ML related. Uh, and then we have new models. There's improvement in efficiency of one of the models that also reduces the tokens use. We'll talk about that next. Jonas, Any real, quick, yeah. real quick, I just wanted, I mean, we glossed over it and we had said that we were maybe going to talk about it, but but uh, these actually, the aggregation policies and projection policies are really some yep. pretty cool things. And we'll probably go into more detail in a future pro talk. But just so everybody knows, an aggregation policy, what that is, is if we wanted to protect data at a certain level, but it's okay to see it at an aggregated level. So you can yep. see uh, a sum of salaries at the region level, but you can't see it for an individual. That's right. what aggregation policies are. So we can define that uh, you know, certain things you can see at, at specific levels, which is really pretty cool when you think about it. Yeah. And then the projection policies is, let's say you're working with, uh, with a partner or something like that. You want to be able to look, do some identity management and be able to share some data and, and look and see, hey, do we have some you know, some similar customers or some of those type of things, what you can do is you can set up some projection policies that says, hey, these columns, you can use these to be able to, to match some stuff up, right? But you can't actually see the data. Um, mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's just it's it's just showing us that Snowflake is taking, you know, these things to another level of giving us the ability to do governance inside of the Snowflake data cloud, the data right. state, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 to be able to support our business needs. So it's just, uh, to me, it's pretty exciting when we see these kind of things. So. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Absolutely. And, and to me, in general, it comes up to Snowflake because when I compare them to Databricks, when I have to work, this is the level of uh, next, you know, refinement, sophistication that comes into navigating some, whether it's governance or SQL or just the workloads. And, and mm -hmm. it's just that refinement that, that I see much, much more advanced, much more faster in Snowflake than, than other tools. Uh, so, so, and that's not being biased, by the way, or bought. <laughs> yeah, uh, 